Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well. With us today, we have La Perrier on back and on her, I'm creating this full coverage beauty queen glam makeup look. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking the Clarins Double Serum along with the Plexiglass Illuminator, mixing them both together and applying it onto the skin. I used this combination in my last tutorial with Colleen and I really liked the results. So I'm doing the same again today with La Perrier. And what's nice about these products together is that they're gonna hydrate her skin and give it that drink of water, but without making it feel heavy. We're going in with a lot of product today, especially powders. So this skincare will complement what we use on top of it. And of course, per usual, I bring this down the neck and chest for that glowy finish. Once I have this massaged in, I'm then using the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 520 Rosewood and applying this on with a makeup sponge. I think this is the perfect shade for her. It has that warmth to it. It doesn't look heavy on her skin and it's gonna even things out just a little bit before we head into concealer. And notice I'm not using a lot of this foundation and I'm not bringing it up to her under eyes either. I'll be using concealer there afterwards so there's no sense in laying more in more product on top of each other when it's not necessary. The concealer will be doing most of the work today, so I'm using the foundation as a base for what we'll be applying on top. And honestly, had we not already committed to a full coverage glam look today, I kind of think just, you know, a little of this foundation would have looked really beautiful for our natural glam, right? Her skin looks incredible, but... You know, that's for another time. We're gonna have fun today with makeup. So next up, I'm mixing together this one size butter silk concealer in the shade Dark 2R with the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer in the shade SX11 and applying this onto the areas of the face I want to highlight. So the under eyes, the center of the forehead, down the center of the nose and chin. The Kevin Aquan concealer is as full coverage as it gets if that's something you're into. But I mixed in the one size concealer because I needed more um, like I, I needed more warmth, you know what I mean? And the, oh, <laughs> I, I kind of messed that up. It, it, it's not quite straight, is it? <laughs> That's all right, I'll, I'll fix that later. But all that matters is that we have it applied and now we can start blending it out. I do take my time with this blend because I want it to be absolutely perfect. You'll see me go back and forth between blending, you know, this out with my makeup sponge and then with a blending brush. And a brush is nice to use sometimes to diffuse out the edges in an area that needs more precision. But back to what I was saying regarding the shade, I wanted a more peachy orange undertone to the highlight rather than a golden yellow. So, you know, that's what we're gonna get by mixing together these concealers. The last time I did La Perrier's makeup, it turned you know it turned out pretty. Don't get me wrong, but the complexion looked too, um, you know, like ashy. It, it needed some warmth to it, if that makes sense. And I think that came down to the concealers or the undertones I chose. I find with deeper complexions, if you go too yellow, it just reads different, especially on camera. So. I'm gonna try not to make that mistake again. It is what it is. We gotta live and learn and move on, but I'm loving how these shades are looking so far. And wherever I wanna add a little more brightness, I'll go back in with that same concealer and apply it on like so. You'll also see me here in a second bring up this concealer to the brow bone, which will also give me a head start on the brow shape I'm gonna later create. But yeah, I'm gonna spend the next few moments finishing up this blend and I'll be right back. Alrighty, now that I'm just about done blending and it's looking really beautiful, I'm gonna use these two Anastasia Beverly Hills loose setting powders to begin setting these liquid products into place. The two shades I'm using here are deep peach and golden orange. I'm mixing them together to create the shade I want to use to set the under eye highlight. Every one is gonna be different. So, you know, depending on your skin tone, you can use a little more of one shade and a little less of another. 
but I found myself using a pretty even mix of both to set the highlighted areas of her face, like the under eyes and brow bone, whereas for the rest of the face, I'm using the deeper shade powder golden orange alone, as is with nothing else. So we're kind of reinforcing the shadows and highlights with different shade powders. Now, if you have a more fair to medium skin tone, I, I would just use a translucent setting powder and reinforce the shadows with a bronzer of some sort, but I need some kind of pigment in there or else it's going to leave a grayish white cast to the skin. Does that happen to anybody else? I mean, if you know of a good translucent setting powder that is actually universal for all skin tones, please let me know. But until then, I think this is the way to go. Okay, next up, I'm using the Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade Mocha Mami and using the lightest amount of this around the perimeter of her face. So the forehead, the temples, and the hollows of her cheekbones. I don't need a whole lot of this because the powders that I'm using to bake with are already adding a highlight to the skin, which is naturally giving more dimension to the areas that have more shadows. So a little goes a long way here with the bronzer. It's just a little something something to reinforce Force the contours and structure of her face before I really go in with the baking. All right, so here's where we turn up the heat a little. I'm heading back to the same powders I used earlier from Anastasia Beverly Hills and using this to bake along the different areas of her face. So the center of the forehead, the jawline, the chin, down the center of the nose and under eyes. For everything except for the under eyes, I'm using the golden orange shade. So golden orange is what I'm using here to bake along the jawline and chin and everything, but the area of the face I want it to be the most bright, which is the under eye area, I'm using the shade Deep Peach. And this is gonna add that spotlight effect to her face once we wipe this all off later on. If you're not looking for a full coverage, full glam look, you can totally skip this step, that's okay. But um, I forget if I said this already, but the whole point of today's glam is because La Perrier is needing headshots for a beauty pageant she's in. So this is a full on beauty pageant makeup. It'll last for hours. It reads really beautiful on stage and in flash photography, but for everyday life, the, you know, just to keep it real with you, you, you may wanna use a little less powder than what I'm using today, but the technique and positioning of the product and the undertones is what's most important here. And you can always scale back on the amount of product you use. But you know what? I, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. If you wanna use even more powder, then you go for it. Live it up, have fun with it, and do whatever makes you feel the happiest. I'm really happy with how this is looking. So I'm gonna start on the eye makeup using this Makeup by Mario Brightening Eye Pencil and running this through her waterline. This is gonna brighten it up, make them appear a little more awake, and it'll add a nice contrast once we apply the shadow and mascara later on. It also kind of gives Gives that doll-like effect that I find to be really uh, flattering. It looks great in person as well as in photography. Next up for eyeliner, I'm using this Inglot Black Gel Eyeliner and placing this along the outer half of the upper lash line and winging it up and out. I do end up coming back to finish up this liner, but as of right now, it's, it's just to get an idea of the eye shape I'm trying to achieve. After this, I'm heading back to the setting powder to start carving out the crease. I'm using this more so as a blueprint before I fully commit to it with concealer. If you're good at doing cut creases and all that, you probably don't need to do this, but I'm taking this precaution because, um, <laughs> well, because I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I think I want to go for a cut crease, but I'm also kind of scared because it's been so long since I've done one, and what if I don't like it? And all these things start running through my mind, right? But laying down this powder first allowed for us to see how it would kind of look before fully committing to it. Once I took a step back and we decided that, you know, yep, this is our journey today, I then fully committed to it with a concealer. I'm using the same concealer I used earlier, by the way, just laying that down right on top of the blueprint I created with the powder. I place this about halfway up onto the eyelid before I use a blending brush to do diffuse out the edges and set it into place with our setting powder. I think for the look we're going for today, a brown smoky eye or a black smoky eye would look really beautiful as well. And honestly, it would probably be my first choice, but I'm glad we decided to do this soft cut crease because 
I've never done one before on my channel, and it's nice to mix it up a bit and challenge myself. Now, for a little extra dimension and detail, I've dipped into a dark brown eyeshadow with a detailed eyeshadow brush and placing that right along the crease we've created. Nothing too crazy, just a little something to sharpen it up. And then as promised, I've head back to our gel eyeliner to trace along the rest of the lash line. So this eyeliner is now starting from the very inner corner of the eye and traveling up and out towards the outer part of her eye for that winged out feline effect. The lower lash line is going to be quite easy today. I'm just smoking out a bit of that brown eyeshadow and then tracing along the lash line with a gel eyeliner. I don't even remember which brown eyeshadow I used, but really it doesn't matter. You can use which one you already have, but these two products paired together give the lash line some depth and contrast, especially against that nude eyeliner we earlier used. Next up, I'm using this Buxom Lash Volumizing Mascara and applying this to both her top and bottom lashes. I am adding false lashes to this look today, but it's important to really get in there with this mascara at the root of the top lashes because this will help blend the falsies in with her natural lashes. And she has some incredible bottom lashes, doesn't she? It really helps tie in that doll-like effect I was going for. Okay, so the lashes I'm using today are the Style Rich AF from Tati Lashes, and I'm popping these right on. I think this style is perfect for this look. They're still dramatic and glam, but they don't overpower the look. You know what I mean? They complement her eye shape and the eye makeup we've created. Now, while I wait for this lash glue to dry, I'm gonna begin on the eyebrows. The eyebrows today are quite simple as well. I'm using some black eyeshadow to fill in and create the shape I'm going for. In fact, what I've done here is I've dipped this angled liner brush into a little bit of that setting powder and then the black eyeshadow. And what this has done is it's created more of a cooler toned down black shade. Sometimes a straight up black eyeshadow and the brows can look a little intense and harsh. So this just gives it a softer appearance, especially since I'm focusing most of this pigment on the outer two thirds of the brow. Next, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel in the shade Ebony to lock the brow hairs into place. And because this gel has a color pigment in it, it'll also give the brows a little more depth where I need it to. Then I can take a step back, see where I need to fine tune the shape, and then go back in with the eyeshadow to work out the details. For the lips, I'm using this Uma Beauty lip liner in the shade Simone to trace the borders. We're going for a nude lip today, so we couldn't have chosen a better lip liner for this. It's really the perfect deep brown nude shade for her. And I know some people are probably thinking, Spence, you know, don't all lip liners look the same? But really, they don't. It's hard to find the perfect shade. I love this for our model because it's deep enough in tone where it still adds contrast, but also it, it's not too red, it's not too yellow, it's really just perfect. So with this, I'm using this Pat McGrath lipstick in the shade Divine Rose and placing this in the center of her lips. This will give us a soft ombre effect to the nude lip that I think looks really beautiful on everyone. It has that effortless vibe to it because the lip products look a little worn in. And then I'll head back to our lip liner to blend in the edges of that lipstick as well. Now, because I love a glossy lip, I'm using this Bite Beauty lip gloss in the shade Guava Puff and placing this right on top for that high shine finish. For the most part, I'm placing this in the center and then diffusing it outwards. This gloss has enough color pigment and sparkle in it to complement the other lip products that we paired with it, but not so much pigment where it's completely opaque and gonna wash out the lip, you know what I mean? They all just work so well together and I couldn't be happier with how this lip turned out. And Le Perrier loved it too, and that's really what matters most here, right? She wanted something pretty and a little pink, so I think that's what we achieved. But now, we've got to head back to the complexion and finish up this look. I'm wiping away the powder that we've let sit here, but notice I, I'm being kind of careful with this in terms of how I'm wiping this away. I'm keeping this brush in the same area that I had applied the powder, so I'm trying not to get it onto the areas we had applied the bronzer earlier, and that's because this powder does have a color pigment in it. And even though it's a tiny bit, it can shift the tone of the shadows if we blend it out too much. And once I've done this, I'm using the one size cheek clapper blush in the shade Firestarter to blush up her cheeks. I really like this blush color on her. It warms up the skin. It gives it that sun-kissed touch 
and it'll work out any grayish undertones we may get from the powders. I mean, you can already begin to see the difference between the two sides here, right? It, it really is just so flattering and adds the perfect finishing touch to the complexion. Now, while I'm mostly placing this onto the apples of her cheeks, I'm not afraid to bring this up to the under eyes as well. In fact, I'll even take an eyeshadow brush and apply this to the areas I think need a little more warmth, almost like color correcting, but with a powder. And keep in mind, you wanna be light-handed with this because the complexion products will become even warmer once they become wet from a setting spray. Speaking of which, I'm using the MAC Fix Plus setting spray as the finishing touch, which makes this the final step in how I created this full glam look on our naturally gorgeous beauty queen, La Perrier. There we have it kids, I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.